I'm a bit of a sucker for stories that are based on things like ancient mythology and old legends. It kind of comes from having most of your family be anthropology nuts. So when I heard that there was a new King Arthur film coming out, my curiosity was piqued. What I didn't realize was that I was walking into a Guy Ritchie film. While I haven't seen many of his films, from what I have seen, he's always been a little hit or miss. He knows how to make good, fast-paced action sequences that carry a unique flavor to them, but his skills in characterization and storytelling... I find them lacking. I will give him this, though. At least his films are passionate. I knew next to nothing about the film going in. I hadn't seen any trailers nor advertisements. I mainly heard about the film through an Omaze charity campaign that was done to promote the film because I keep forgetting to unsubscribe from their mailing list. Now, as the film began, I noticed that it actually kind of eases you into it in a very creative way where they have the logos of all the studios kind of play in reverse, where you're seeing them the way they would appear at the end of their usual animation sequences you see at the start of every single film, but then it literally plays backwards, as if you're being pulled backwards into a time of myth and legend. And from the start of the film, you're taken into a whole new world that plays by its own rules. I mean, if you're going to do a drastic interpretation of Arthurian legend, you may as well come out with it right out of the gate. However, while the opening prologue is a decently paced and actually intriguing opening, it then decides to hit the fast forward button as you're ripped from a formulaic but entertaining fantasy film into a fast paced montage opening of a television series. I mean seriously, with the theme music and the way that the credits are used in the sequence, you'd think you were watching a Netflix series or something. The first time this happened at the beginning, it made sense, it was forgivable. You had to get the main character from being a child to being an adult so the story could start, got a lot of exposition and a lot of details to get out of the way fairly quickly, and it did the job at least in a way that got your attention. However, when the film decided to do this two or three more times at moments where we're supposed to be learning about the characters, it was a little bit ridiculous. I mean, it was almost like Richie wanted to get through the story bit so we could get straight to the action and just decided to fast forward the film for us. The problem here is that he did this for moments that usually call for periods of slow buildup, especially when there's supposed to be moments where the main character, and by extension the audience, is given critical insight and confronts a part of himself that's holding him back from his greater destiny. Instead, they just have the characters discuss this as they try to speed us through it and basically explain, oh, here's what the main character is going to be doing or what he needs to do and kind of that weird we're going to describe the plan and then show them actually doing the plan at the same time sort of thing and honestly we're just given a haphazard summary rather than actually seeing the character explore these things and confront these things we don't see the character grow we're just told that the character is growing and changing as for the action sequences that guy Ritchie is so desperate to skip to they're just okay for the most part Nothing that's too memorable or impressive, just a lot of visual effects flourishes that make the sequences look kind of like a PlayStation 3 game. That said, the build-up to some of these sequences is fairly well executed, as you see the main character using his cunning and intellect to lay out these elaborate plans. As a result, the film feels like part fantasy film, part heist film. Overall, the film is a mildly entertaining fantasy film that is pretty much like all of the other fantasy films we've seen before it that weren't based on a Tolkien novel. Slightly better written than The Last Witch Hunter, and with a slightly better sense of what it wants to be than, say, Warcraft. That said, for as much ground as it covers, it really needed to devote more time to the character's journey of self-discovery. We never really see him earn his happy ending, it's more or less just given to him because that's how these plots play out. To a point, I think the film is aware of that fact, and it tries its best to be at least a more entertaining take on it that carries that unique Guy Ritchie flair. If you liked his take on Sherlock Holmes, you'll probably enjoy this film since it's more of the same, except in a fantasy world with a less interesting protagonist. However, if you're looking for the next big fantasy epic, you won't really find it here. It's entertaining and filled with a genuine passion, but its haphazard pace and formulaic execution holds it back from being anything more than just a popcorn film. All of that said, King Arthur, Legend of the Sword, gets a 3.5 out of 5. So that's it for this episode of Romney's Reviews. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.